Okay, so I've already taken my saw here and I've cut off the button. I mean, I, I, I'm guessing most of you know how to saw and everything, so I just put it right here and cut it off. Uh, I just didn't want to take the time. So now we have the wax and we have the casting. And so the next thing to do, this is a uh, half round file, kind of worn out, but it, it's all I got right now. So I have these grooves that are in my bench pin. And I set the, try and do this so you can see. So long strokes, maybe if I move it over here. So when I pull back, it doesn't cut. And I push forward and I turn to the outside. That's where you get your cut. And so by doing long strokes, it keeps from getting a groove. And so I recommend you do the center first so that you can get the finger size. You gotta keep your hand up or you'll poke yourself with the file. Okay, so at that point, then you can take, now we wanted to get it to an eight. It's really close, but not quite there, so it's good to have a, I like the rawhide mallet. Normally I'd do this down here, but I don't know if you can see, so I'm gonna do it up here. By holding it, instead of setting it, it's a lot quieter. So you want to turn it over, do both sides, and if it's not quite to size, you can either file it out more on the inside, or you can take this hammer, which will actually stretch it up to the size. And again, I would normally do it down here. So we're right about at the eight. And by the time we go in and emery paper it, um, it's all polished, it should be right at an eight. So after that, the next part is the outside of this is flat. So what we want to do is take a file. I like to have it on my bench pin like that. I use my thumb to keep it from falling off and I use the thumb as a guide. Sometimes I like, if I'm doing silver, I like the bigger file. If I'm doing platinum or gold, something that's more custom, I use a smaller file so that I don't take off quite as much metal. At one time. Having a good bench pin is very important. And you want to have it so that it will work with what you're working on. Now I mostly do stuff like this so the way I have it set up works ideal for me. If you're someone that does a lot of sawing, piercing something out, you may want to have a V cut in here. But I, I don't I don't do a lot of that. So.
Now, if this is hard for you to hold, then you could take a ring clamp and you could clamp that in. Make sure you push that up really far there. Sometimes I'll even turn it over, whack it with a hammer. So this is braced up against here and I'm just holding it. So now this is coming together really well going to be a little bit of shrinkage but it's not too bad and uh, kind of have to figure out how we're going to finish the sides of this so I would probably since it's got kind of like um, a lot of rounded areas I might take a file just kind of go around the edges a little bit don't want them too sharp Then I would take an emery board. This is definitely worn out. I'd have a good a, a good brand new one so it really cuts fast. Just like the filing, you want long strokes pushing. You want this finish to be flat and smooth. You don't want to do this because it'll cause little flat spots. This thumb gets a lot of abuse. It'd be pretty tough if you had long nails, I think. But I've seen people do it, so... It's nice when you slip because then you run it right across your hand. So at that point, we could kind of emery the sides a little bit. For doing the inside, very easy. Take one of these. This one, uh, I got another one around here, but we'll take that off. I keep these pieces of emery paper. This is 220. I take and I fold over just the end like that. Slide that on. Put that on if you just kind of grab it like that it runs right up into a all wound up there and then it'll fit right in here now you want to have a dust mask on you don't want to breathe this I like to do kind of on the edge too, like this. It also gets a little bit hot. Sometimes I'll have a little container of water. I don't know where it's at at the moment. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is grab kind of a rubber wheel. I like these gray ones like this. I'm definitely going to put on the dust mask. 
hard to do it when I'm doing a video, but I don't want to breathe this stuff, so you can just kind of take and uh, go around your pattern. Just kind of smooth out the rough spots. So at this point, really what needs to be done, looks like I forgot the top here. Okay, at that point, I would go in with a brush wheel like this, it's soft. I would use a Tripoli or a bobbing compound. And I would go in, this will get really hot. On silver and uh, copper it get really hot. And you can pre-polish the inside of the ring. The key is to move it fast. My fingers are probably smoking right now. And you can even go, you could get into the crevices if you wanted. I'm thinking maybe this ring should have a stone or two set in it. So I'm going to think about that and then we'll maybe we'll look at doing that next. It's pretty cool on its own though, so I think we'll wrap it up there. Maybe we'll take it over to the polishing machine, polish it up. Could be antiqued got a lot of possibilities so all right I think I guess we'll stop there thank you